Hello, welcome back to the workshop for part three of the great guitar build off 2021 build. In the last episode, we put the truss rod in, got the fretboard sorted out, and also trimmed off most of the waste material from the central section of the guitar. Since that point, um, I've done a few little bits and pieces off camera just to get this moving along a little bit. Firstly, the more I looked at the fretboard, the more I liked it, um, and the more I thought that the figure in the rosewood was really going to stand out when it got a bit of oil on it but the more I looked at the clay kind of dot markers that I'd put in the more I disliked them and thought that they were detracting from the beauty of the fretboard so I very carefully drilled those out and I've replaced them with some prettier perloid type markers and I think it does look a lot better it just lifts the fretboard with the lighter markers secondly I've cut one of the copies of my design up and I've made a couple of templates for the halves of the body. And I've also milled the wood that's going to form the top and the back of the guitar. Now, working with reclaimed materials is fraught with dangers and it often brings a few surprises. And that is the case in this instance. The board that I thought was 30 mil thick is in fact two kind of 15 mil bits glued together and you can probably see there it's not a brilliant glue joint in some of the places so there's a potential challenge to be had with that but we'll just have to see what the glue line looks like when we actually cut the pieces we need out um, if it looks horrible I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more creative Okay, so for me, the next logical step is to get the four pieces of timber that are gonna form the two halves of the body um, cut out, rough shaped, so that we can start to think about getting them glued together. Okay, so that's the four bits of wood that will make the two halves of the body um, cut out on the bandsaw and kind of rough sanded as far as I can on the disc sander. Now, I mentioned earlier that working with reclaimed timber can throw up the odd surprise. Well, this has thrown up another surprise and the join that is clearly visible on here is nowhere to be seen anywhere else. Now I think what's happened here is I cut this from a much bigger board roughly on a glue joint and I think what we're seeing there is just some kind of an artifact from when the two boards were glued together side by side kind of in that orientation and it's not where two boards are being glued together to get the thickness so that is actually a really really good piece of news for me. Um, it means that I'm not gonna to have to do any treatment on the side to hide it, which is great news. However, when I was jigsawing these apart because they won't fit on my bandsaw any other way, I did actually carve off a little bit of material 
on both of these horns. So we're going to have some extra fancy carving on those horns to hide that. Only mistakes, that's what they say. Right. So ordinarily what I'd be doing now is getting the glue out. And I'd be gluing these together to form the two halves of the body before I took them to the table router and finalised the shape. However, I'm thinking ahead a little bit here because on the lower half of the body, we're going to have some controls and we're going to have a volume, a tone and a three position switch. So I need to think about what I'm going to do on the back of here for a control cavity cover. So am I going to have it this timber? Am I going to have it a contrasting timber? Am I going to use a plastic one? Um, I've considered all of these things and I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to have one at all. If I can get away without one, I'm not going to do it. So here's what I propose to do. I'm not going to put anything on the front. All I'm going to have on the front is the three holes for the controls to go through. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a control cavity into here, leaving about six mil on the back. I'm going to cut the same control cavity into the top, leaving about six mil on the top. And then when I cut the rear pickup cavity, what I can do is cut a little access channel at the side of that pickup cavity where I can pass the pots and the switch and the output jack through and just fish them into the holes on the top. Okay, to help me figure out the configuration here, I've, I've just mocked everything up. Um, I've got a couple of SGs and I really like the control layout on those. So I'm going to kind of do this in a similar vein. So the switch is going to be kind of somewhere here at the front and then the volume and tone set back there. Um, so that will give me kind of where I need to position this cavity. So now all I need to do is create a cutout in the template and we can get cutting these out. Okay, and then we have the two halves with the cavity routed out. Um, actually quite a long job, probably taking me about 45 minutes to do all of that. Um, so before you all start, no, I'm not going to chamber the other half of the body. Um, this is purely for the controls to go in, it's not a weight relieving measure or anything. The guitar's coming down to a reasonable weight now, so that's not a concern. And I also think chambering the guitar would give me a tone different to the one that I'm looking for. So I'm not going to go to those extremes. Um, so now what I need to do is just cut an additional little channel out in these. Um, 
that will allow me to feed the controls in through the pickup cavity. So what I need to do is clear up, mock the whole thing up again, kind of work out where the bridge pickup is gonna go, and then I can cut the access into both of these components. Okay, so there's the chambers cut into the bottom half of the body. Um, all lines up really well. Got a nice big access hole there to feed my stuff in when I'm going to need it. So, there's nothing left for it now but to see if I've got enough clamps to get the two halves of the body glued up. Don't think I do. Okay, so that's the first half glued up um, and I've used pretty much every clamp I've got. So I'm going to have to do this in two stages. So I'll get back to you once the glue up's all done. Okay, so while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the two body halves, um, we can turn our attention back to this central section again. Um, and in particular, this section that will form the center of the body. Now, as I said in the last episode, I wasn't very happy with the look of this wood. There's a, a little blotch there, and there's this streak that just looks horrible, and I wouldn't be happy with that on the top of the guitar. Now, there's a couple of things I could do here. Um, one, I could cut, say, six millimeters out of this top section and put a nicer piece of wood in there. Um, that would certainly work, but it'd be quite a bit of work. Um, However, I've had a dig around and in one of my drawers of random stuff, and you probably can't see this very well, I've got a couple of sheets of this bird's eye maple veneer. It's quite flamey. You'll see it better when I bring the camera in. Um, and it's got some nice bird's eye figure in there. So my plan is, well, my initial plan was to book match two pieces of this onto the top, but there's some marks on it that I wouldn't really want on the top um, and if I cut them out I wouldn't have enough material for what I plan to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a piece of this veneer on the top section of the body and I'm also going to put another piece of it on the headstock so that will match right the way through. But you might also have noticed when I've been laying this out I haven't been putting the wings of the guitar on like that I've actually been positioning them like that and the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to trim this body down so that it runs in one line right away along the fingerboard right the way through to the end of the guitar and the main reason I'm doing that is because if I had any of this material left, it would be really difficult to get that veneer on and in place because I've only just about got enough for the length that I need. Also, I think it will kind of look quite nice as it runs through at that angle. So the next step is I'm going to take this to the bandsaw, trim off this excess material again, and then we need to get this set up so we can route it to clean up both these faces and along the edge of the fretboard on the neck.
okay. So I've just tried to flush this up on the router table. And to be honest, I don't feel safe doing it. This is a really weird shape and there's no real easy way to hold it onto the table in such a fashion as you're gonna get a consistent cut. Um, and also it was starting to grab in a couple of places. So I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna take it off and I'm going to go old school on it. Okay, so that's all planed up now. Uh, it wasn't the easiest tasks. As I said in the second episode, the grain on these two pieces of maple is running in opposite directions. So um, that took a little bit of creative thinking to get around, but we got there. It's all good. It's all flat and smooth. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is to get this piece of an ear onto the front of the guitar. Um, and there's no great secrets to this. I'm going to just choose the nicest looking piece and have this towards the butt of the guitar because a lot of this will be cut out for pickups or be covered with the bridge etc so i think it's going to fit best in that orientation so i'm simply going to roughly mark that out And I'm going to rough trim it a little bit away from the lines. Now you can buy specialist saws to do this job and I have got one but I just find if you go steady, take a few passes. very sharp knife you can get it done just as well just like that we'll save those little off cuts because you never know And then it's just gonna be simply a case of getting some tight bond onto the top of the guitar, positioning this, and I've cut a couple of quite sturdy calls, and then just get plenty of clamps onto there to make sure it's all pushed down really, really well. Okay, so that's all clamped up now. We'll just have to leave that a couple of hours to dry up and we'll see how we've done. With that drying, we can now turn our attention back to the two halves of the body because these have come out of the clamps. Um, they look to have joined really nicely. So next up for these is we get the templates stuck onto them and we get them to the table router. Okay, so that's the two halves of the body off the router table and it's come out really, really nicely. The join is nice and it's routed nice and smooth. So I'm really, really happy with that. So the next thing I need to look at is to get the clamps off the other piece of the guitar and see how we've done with that veneer.
And the next thing I need to do is to just clean up the extra veneer that's around the edge. And I think to start with, I'm gonna try a very small little plane and see if I can just plane that down. Okay, so it's time to get this all glued up now. Um, because of the complexity of this glue up, I'm gonna do it in two sections. So I'm gonna glue the top bit on first and then I'll do the bottom bit. Um, I've also taken the opportunity to just do a cheeky little bit of carving on this corner of the top. Otherwise it would have been kind of above where the fretboard meets. So just to make it easier, I've started that before the glue up. Okay, here we go. Okay, that was a little bit fiddly. Um, with the close-in view there, it's a very nice tight glue joint. I'm really, really happy with that. And it's relatively level. It's important to get this level because the veneer is only about half a millimeter thick. So if you do a lot of sanding on it, there's a chance that you'll sand straight through it and we don't want that. But yeah, happy with that. Okay, so that's the first half glued up successfully. Um, it's not fully cured yet, but it's it's strong enough for what we need to do now. So I've got everything set up. I've done a couple of test runs, so I know everything's gonna work pretty much as we want it to. So it's just a question now of banging some glue on, getting it clamped up. Okay, and that's the second half glued on. Um, again, seems to have a really good glue line, so I'm happy with that. So we'll just give that a couple of hours and see how it goes. And there it is with both of the halves of the body glued up. Um, I'm not totally convinced by the shape, but I've got plenty of opportunity to kind of fill with that a little bit. I feel that we should be taking quite a lot more of this material out here just to make it look a little bit more balanced. Um, wasn't really something that looked out of place when I was mocking it up, but now it's glued up. I think it doesn't look brilliant. So we'll have to have a play with that, but I'm sure we can do something there. Other than that, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, the glue joints are quite nice. This little bit of veneer looks a little bit dark at the moment, but I've tried a test sanding and it brings it out quite nicely. So I think what that is, is perhaps something transferred from the MDF when I was gluing it up. But other than that, I'm really, really happy with what we've done so far. So this build's starting to move along a little bit now, um, actually starting to look a bit more like a guitar, um, but I am aware that the clock is ticking for the deadline to get it finished. So I'm going to be back very, very soon with episode four. Um, so like if you've liked, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. It really, really does help me out and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.